Hi, this is Yvette Francino, and I am very excited to have as my guest today, Hannah Kane, who I met, oh, I don't know, I think it was five or six years ago, but she, I met her virtually too. I really, because she wrote this awesome guide called Scrum Your Wedding. It, it was more than a guide. She had a business about doing wedding planning using Scrum, and Scrum is an agile framework that I happen to be all immersed in and, and very, was very interested in that. And so I was teaching a class up in Portland. Is that right? Is that where you are, you're from? That's right. And so I, I, I used to have this goal. We're going to be talking about goal setting, but I used <laughs> to have a goal that whenever I traveled for work that I found somebody that lived there and shared a meal with them and, you know, hopefully met a new friend. And so when I was going to Portland, I knew that uh, that that was where Hannah was based and I asked her if she would care to join me and we had a wonderful lunch and got to know each other better and she just is involved in so many really interesting things. I just love her ebooks and the messages that she sends and she wrote this guide to good life which you know of course is way up my alley and so I was very excited that she was going to join me to talk about direction. So we're talking about action for happiness on this in this season and the different 10 keys to happiness is defined by action for happiness. It, they create the acronym great dream with the sixth being a D and not not yeah dream but direction is what the D stands for and direction being another way of talking about goal setting. So very long introduction, but I want you to do more of an introduction about yourself, Hannah. I'm going to just you take it away and tell us more about yourself and what you have been working on and yeah, anything. Sure. Well, it's really nice to talk to you again. I'm so glad our paths crossed, uh, however long ago that was. Um, so I'm a, I'm a product manager um, in software and for the last few years I've been in the public sector. Um, so basically I help to build websites and software that allow people to access government services. So that's kind of, I say it's my day job, um, but I don't mean to disparage it because I find it quite meaningful. Um, but I say it's my day job because I've always wanted to keep a bit of a line between my, my job and my identity. So I'm a projects person. I've always got side projects <laughs> going on. Um, you mentioned Scrum Your Wedding, um, which is a really fun one. Um, the main side project that it's on a, it's kind of on a hiatus right now, but that I've had for a long time is something I do with two of my very talented, wonderful friends. It's called Everybody's Invited. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a little bit of an umbrella for uh, some of the other projects that I do. And the whole theme of Everybody's Invited is about creating connection and uh, opportunities for people to connect through things like um, convening, scav theme parties and scavenger hunts are like a thing we love to do. Um, we, uh, my, my two friends and I, we all have different skills and different interests, but the sort of Venn diagram where we overlap is around those, those themes of connection and making things special and fun. Um, so yeah, and I bring these, these two sides together, the professional software development, kind of project management, the scrum stuff. I like to connect that to these other, you know, initiatives and efforts. Uh, that are around making life special and meaningful. Um, so yeah, that's that's yeah. kind of my deal. Oh, and such a, you're such a kindred spirit. I mean, so much of my ally because I love games and scavenger hunts and connection. Again, that's that's even and living a meaningful life. And mm -hmm. then I have that geek side because I'm yep. from software <laughs> development too. And you know, I I think that there is so much positive psychology kinds of concepts in the philosophies that come with Agile. So now that I'm sort of semi-retired, I, 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 I use this Agile, these Agile philosophies every in my everyday life. So just like you had a scrum your wedding, 
I mean, I've been really toying with the idea about I, um, using Agile in retirement. And mm. just, it's just become such a mindset for me as, to, uh, you know, kind of the different, the different aspects like uh, working in iterations and, you know, that why it's interesting to talk to you around goal setting is because a lot of the Agile concepts are helping us get things done, helping us with productivity. So uh, how, do you wanna talk a little bit about that, about your own method, uh, whether you use the agile concepts or not of goal setting? How, what do you, how do you get things done? How, do you, how are you motivated to be productive and, and meet goals? Yeah, so I was thinking about this question and I realized that I don't struggle with motivation. Um, as much as like, I, for example, my, my husband, he struggles with motivation a lot. He has really big goals for himself and he struggles to stay motivated. And I don't have that. And, and there are two reasons. And one of them is a very agile reason. Uh, the first reason is the nature of the goals I set. Um, they're smaller than my husband's, for example. Um, and I think they're kind of more immediately achievable. And it's, this isn't something I've worked at. This is just kind of the way I am. So this is going to seem like a cop out to people who have really big goals. They're going to be like, well, this doesn't help me. <laughs> um, but my goals are they, they, the nature of the goals is there's things that I really want to do. And what I mean by that is I don't set a goal. Like I want to write a novel if I don't actually want to write every day, because then, because I, then I don't actually want to write a novel. <laughs> if I don't want to write every day, I don't really want to write a novel. Um, but I can set a goal like I want to uh, cook 10 new dishes because I actually do. I do want to do that. It's not going to be hard for me to do it. So motivation isn't actually a, a question. Yeah, right. <laughs> so that's one that's thing. I just, part, if your first key to motivation is wanting to do it. Yeah, I have to actually want to do it. I can't just kind of you know, I like the idea of writing a novel. I love the idea of writing a novel, but I don't want to write every day. And I know that about myself. So it's not a goal. Maybe it will be someday. I'm open to that possibility, but it's not <laughs> right now. Uh, and then the second reason why I don't feel like I struggle with motivation too much is very agile. And that's, I am a big quitter. I will quit goals all the time. <laughs> so if I, you know, I have countless examples of this, but one I thought of this morning was I, I did have a goal one year, I was going to read 52 books, I was going to read a book every week. Um, and then, you know, I set this on January 1st, and in about April, I was really far behind. And I just thought, oh, that's not actually my goal. If it was my goal, I'd be doing it. <laughs> so clearly, I don't actually want to read a book every week. And then I thought to myself, what am, what am I actually wanting to do? And it was something totally different, you know, like I'm really trying to learn how to sew right now. That's, that's what I was doing. So I, I'm very comfortable with iterating on my goals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and again, this might feel like, you know, cheating to someone. Um, but it's not to me because to me, it's, a, it's about knowing myself right. and allowing myself the freedom to evolve. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that's kind of what I thought of. I, there was one big exception and I like it's notable and I think probably a lot of people can relate to it. I, can, I would like to be motivated and I am not motivated around my physical health. So meaning like diet, diet and exercise. Mm -hmm. I really do wish I was more motivated to make better choices in that area. And I have tried tons of different strategies to get motivated. And sometimes they work for a while and sometimes they don't. And where I'm at right now is I'm okay with that being in flux. I'm okay with the fact that sometimes I'm motivated. And one time I ran a half marathon because I was really motivated and I stayed motivated for a long time. And right now in the midst of this pandemic, I'm not that motivated <laughs> around it. And, and I'm just kind of recognizing that as a as a fact of life, because our health is not something we ever get to accomplish and check off, you know, it's yeah. a forever thing. Yeah, well, there's so many different things. I, I, was, I was saying to Hannah before we started recording here that I could just pick her brain for hours because this stuff excites me and all the things that she's interested in 
and has written about excites me. Uh, but as far as um, goal setting, yeah, like one of the agile things is to work in iterations, work small goals, don't try to do the great big thing. And then as you're do, but if you do have a big goal, so if you did feel like you wanted to write a novel, it's, How would I do it? Then what you would want to do, though, is to have a small goal of something you're going to do this week or in what we call an iteration, and it would be a value. So I have worked with people before in an agile way of that want to write, have a big, that they have a big goal. And they might say, okay, every week I'm going to write a thousand words or something like that. And I'm like, no, that's not, that's not the agile way of doing it. You have every week, maybe write a story or an ebook for, or, or, so, and then you get feedback on that. So you can see what is resonating with your, your client base or, or that kind of thing. You want to make sure that your short goals add some value and also give you feedback about whether or not this is really working. Do you really want to write that big novel or is it okay to, to have the ebook? And then also you do ask why. So that's kind of what you were talking about too, being okay to switch to a different goal. When you had your goal to read 52 books, the question is like, why, why did you want to read those 52 books? And maybe you figured out what I really wanted was to learn more about sewing is that right mm -hmm. yeah um so <laughs> those where I was focused in that moment yeah, in April so yeah maybe you read one book about sewing and you have and then the next week your goal is to sew something or you know or to get a different style of sewing or whatever but you kind of just keep back in exam so back to the goal the the reading the books though Hannah when you originally set that goal what was your idea just that you wanted to read more or that were there certain books that you felt like had been on your list for a long time and you needed to or what what was the yeah why behind that you know I'm, I'm realizing it's kind of funny that I chose that example because books are an example to me of the kind of goal I think everyone has certain goals that they don't actually need to set because I do I am a big reader so I don't actually need to have it be an explicit goal I'm just going to read it's something that I, yeah. yeah, I like to do. Yeah. Um, I think everyone has things like that. Maybe not reading, but maybe um, around cooking or playing music or something. It's not, you know, I don't need to remind myself to read. So that was kind of the realization I came to there. But I think if you're, if you're kind of getting at like uh, the kind, the kinds of goals where you want to set up infrastructure for them, like a, um, you know, everyone has different ways of tracking goals. I, I use, you know, it, it's changed over time, but right now I'm using Trello a lot, which is a- I use Trello too. Yeah, you know, pretty common, like to-do list type of thing. And you can make it really reflect the scrum process of to-do, doing, done, um, those those columns to, to kind of track your work. Um, so the, you know, the kinds of things where, the bigger goals where you want to, like you said, break it down into smaller testable chunks and you want to build some infrastructure around. I do have those goals as well. There, I have a lot of them at work. I mean, that's where I use that kind of agile framework for goal setting the, the most is like the, the goals that are shared across a team. I think it's really important to do that kind of breaking down into smaller pieces, having the, the cadence built in of like, we're going to revisit this every two weeks and yeah. see if we're still on track, see if we want to change anything about the goal. That's really important in team contexts. Um, I think I had a goal, I guess maybe one of the larger goals I've had over the last few years is I wanted to test the idea that maybe I wanted to uh, break into comedy. <laughs> um, oh, cool. I love, <laughs> always kind of like had in the back of my mind when people would say like, what's your like total dream job? Mm -hmm. I would say uh, to be a writer for a political comedy show, like oh, the Daily wow. Show. That was always like dream job, love, love funny stuff, you know? And, and uh, so to test it, this was very agile. Yeah. I started, first I started on my own. I was like, I'm just, I'm just going to write things. And so I would kind of, you know, probably had like a, a weekly goal of like every week, I'm going to try to write something funny. Didn't 
get very far. So after, I don't know, maybe a month of that, I kind of checked in, how is this going? Is this getting me towards my goal of becoming a comedy writer? <laughs> um, and I thought, no, this is getting me nowhere. I need help. This is a skill that you need to learn. <laughs> um, so I started taking classes. Uh -huh. uh, I took a, a online class with Second City and it was about writing satire. Loved it, gave me a lot of accountability because there was homework every week. I'm, I do really well with that kind of thing. <laughs> um, then uh, I took another class and then I took another class and then I bit the bullet and took a stand-up comedy class, wow. which was terrifying. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but at each phase, I was sort of iterating and checking in with myself and saying, is this what I thought it was going to be? Mm -hmm. Is this what I want? Do I, am I getting better? Right. Those are kind of like the questions you might ask in a software context as well. Like, is this what we want to be doing? And are we making progress Working towards our goal? Not, and what yeah. else can we do differently? Yep. Yeah. So definitely like, breaking things down, making them testable. It was just like, how can I test my theory that this is something that would be enjoyable to me and that I might be good at this? So I was just looking for opportunities to test that. So what were your conclusions? Are we gonna see? Um, on, on <laughs> I, I, I mean, I feel like it's been a little bit paused by the pandemic because I, I had just finished my my second showcase right when the pandemic hit, I, my stand-up showcase, I loved it. I was doing open mic nights. Wow, I that's was really, cool. really into it. And that's now awesome. there's no more open mic nights. Well, I'll tell you, now one of my uh, future guests, another person I met virtually first and then met her and she's, she does improv and they mm. have a whole online thing and they're, um, and it's actually, uh, very, I, I, I get stage fright so much, so I don't want to do that. <laughs> that would be terrifying to me. <laughs> but I also do try to push myself out of my comfort zone. And I, I wanted to learn uh, just because that's a big thing in Agile too. They talk about improv and that helping people mm -hmm. with communication. Uh, so I, I don't <laughs> want to be even virtually on stage, but it's, it's a little less intimidating to do it virtually and for some people, I think, yeah. because uh, you don't, you know, like see that audience there and have to care about whether that the laughing. I mean, that's the thing. Like stand up <laughs> comedy, and it's kind of like the laughing is contagious. But then you just are. I know I would be so like nervous that they wouldn't get the joke and there wouldn't be any laughing. And so when you're doing it virtually, I'm, I'm not sure how they handle that if they do a soundtrack or something to just kind of yeah. I, I wonder. Or, but um, but. I, anyway, getting off topic and I know I have to be better at that. I just think that that is, that is really great and I'm excited for you. I will also, I did also wanna comment on um, the thing about healthy habits. And that's something I think so many people struggle with. It's such mm -hmm. probably the number one goal at the beginning of the year resolution yep. is I'm gonna uh, either lose certain amount of weight or I'm going to eat more healthfully or all this kind of thing. And since one of my goals, again, is to bring agile philosophies into the everyday life, I have been using that one quite as a, as a, as a little bit of a test subject. I've done it with different people. But one of the things that I think is super key is to have um, sort of that celebration of your progress along the way. So again, with iterations that you don't like have to wait till you lose like the end of the year or that's one mm, of the mm -hmm. problems with new year's resolutions is it's like it's too daunting to think for the rest of my life i have to eat only <laughs> when do i yeah. ever celebrate that i created a new habit or whatever and um so what i'm doing actually is having new months eve parties and and when i recognize that one of the reasons i am so motivated in january to eat very well be health I'm very healthy and I'm exercising and January is always just like so productive in terms yeah. of healthiness yeah. um and and then 
you know, February comes along with Valentine's Day and then, you know, it all goes to, mm-hmm. you know, you, you're like, okay, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm getting bored with it. Um, but one of the reasons I think it's so successful in January for me is because I sort of take a break in December because of holidays. And then it's like, I can take my break now because I am going to be so good in January. And then I am really good. Yeah. In January. Yeah. And so what I'm trying to do is, um, and I, I have been really eating very healthfully this whole month and I'm having this new month's Eve and on new month's Eve, I am allowing myself a chocolate. <laughs> I, am, <laughs> I am going to have my wine and chocolate and celebrate and say, but February, I'm going to be, uh, you know, I'm going to have my little, my little break, but, uh, so not feeling like I have to deprive myself for the rest of my life but that I want to keep that motivation. And I think, again, part of it is the support from other people, from having that celebration, from having just a little bit of a a break and say, you know, again, reflect back on what worked well in January. What do I want to do differently in February? Do I want to plan for those little events that I know are going to be difficult to eat and and say, I'm going to allow myself some freedoms on certain celebrations, Um, you know, and, you know, you also get back to the why, and it's another thing that you and I have talked about, about outcomes versus, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that overall, it's not like, that the real outcome here is we want to be healthy, and maybe, you know, I, I, I sort of um, also had my son as a beta, uh, he wanted to lose weight. And I said, can you be my beta subject when I see if agile and everything mm-hmm. life works for you? And the first thing when I, you know, said, uh, he'll probably hate me telling this story, but he doesn't listen to my podcast. So maybe it'll be okay. Um, but I, I first said, why do you want to lose weight? And he said, cause I want to get a girlfriend. And, um, so I was like, well, you know, one way is to lose weight. One, one thing, you know, I guess you, most people feel they're more attractive when they lose weight, but there's other things too. I mean, that what other ways might you get a girlfriend? I mean, my, mm-hmm. you know, what about the um, new wardrobe? <laughs> <laughs> Sloppy. And, um, and, you know, we talked about other ideas too, so that you don't have to judge if you really are looking for the why in terms of like health, it's it, what, what about your you do you want to ha- be more healthy? I have um, a problem with bone density, so I want to research like health healthy habit recipes. And then if you like cooking, again, you you can just really kind of make it fun with finding new recipes that kind of match up with whatever your ultimate. Uh, yeah, I love that connection to outcomes and the why. I I do I feel like some of the things that have worked for me in that physical health space over the year and as, as over the years, as I said, it's like, it's in flux, you know, I go through periods where I'm super healthy. One was when I worked with a, a nutritionist and it was cause I'd gotten diagnosed with celiac disease and needed to really change my, you know, kind of doctor's orders. <laughs> um, and so I worked with a nutritionist and I'm someone who, you know, that I really get a lot of benefit from working with another person. So that worked for a while. It d- definitely helped me change my diet permanently. Um, I'm also kind of a rule follower. So, <laughs> so that was helpful. I was, my doctor told me not to eat gluten anymore. So, okay, I don't I haven't eaten any gluten since. Um, another thing that worked for me, and this really connects to that idea of the why, one of my, um, you know, my goals might change all the time, but my my outcomes, desired outcomes for my life have been pretty consistent for, for decades now. And one of them has been vibrancy. Mm-hmm. My, an outcome I want for my life is to feel vibrancy, <laughs> which yeah. basically means like being really connected to my senses, um, appreciate gratitude as part of it, uh, appreciating what, you know, the, the natural world offers and art and music and food. And so I've connected my personal health goals to that desired outcome in one one really specific way that was kind of fun was I spent a year doing a flavor of the week. Mm -hmm. And so I picked, you know, ultimately 52 flavors, but let's say it was like lemon one week and I would come up with, you know, one or two new dishes that really featured lemon and maybe a beverage 
that featured lemon and you know the rest of the week could just be normal but it gave some shape that some of that infrastructure yeah. <laughs> that really helps me to right. meet a goal um and it felt more like hey i'm just creating more vibrancy in my life it happened to make me more conscious of the food decisions i was making so it had i think i was healthier that year but it wasn't it was connected to something that personally was more motivating to me which was to achieve that vibrancy yeah yeah absolutely i thought the same thing around energy what what mm. what i that's really what i want is energy so what healthy foods are going to give me energy and then i did this whole the season two of carpe diem connections was all about joy and there's this joy spotters um facebook page and a lot you know you, if you haven't checked out joy spotters is a great yeah, word yeah, you would love it and um it's so the the facebook group people are posting these wonderful pictures all the time but you and i are very similar also in liking themes and themes kind mm -hmm. of act as a as a prompt like you know again so you you get a your prompt is around these flavors or scents or whatever mm -hmm. and if you can kind of combine that with what you know a, a goal it just makes it fun you know it, yeah. it's really about making your goals fun and not feeling like a sacrifice so yeah kind of back to what you were saying at the beginning of you have to want to do it sometimes <laughs> it's kind of like you want to do it but it's just not fun to do so you have to figure out ways to make it fun that's and, right yeah um scavenger hunts is a great example for me i mean i just well you know a lot of times things aren't exact goals aren't 100 percent fun because it, if you're growing they're stretching you and at the beginning you're not very good at whatever it is like for example mm. so mm -hmm. I, or writing or almost anything that you know most yeah, of us music want, drawing you know, yeah yeah we're we compare ourselves to other people who are really good and we're like i'm not I don't want to do this because it feels embarrassing um, to do something that we're not good at. But you have to you have to get out there and get out of your comfort zone to be able to get good and to get better at it. And if you can just be in a safe space for that, where you don't, you know, that you feel supported and and keep working on it, then that is to me like super motivating because you see how you're overcoming something you couldn't do before, you know? Yeah. yeah. You got to have a growth, a growth mindset. Yes, exactly. Another yeah. thing we push in that agile. <laughs> anyway, I, I know, uh, I, I want to be aware of time here. And because again, I know I could just talk to you forever. I get so excited by all of this. Um, but let's, let's wrap up. And I, I just kind of wrap up by wanting to know, is there any uh, tips you would give our listeners here for how goal setting can increase happiness and help people li live a, a meaningful life. Any, any tips? Yeah. Oh, I like the way you framed that question. I mean, I think actually there, there's kind of an answer in that question, the way you, you, you set that up. I think you, if you use your goals to be the infrastructure for joy in your life. So, um, I know I'm using that word infrastructure a lot. I guess that's my word of the day. Uh, <laughs> but if you if you think about what brings you joy, and then use a goal setting practice to you know increase that thing or uh, build in some routine or something that there's just there's just such a inherent connection between those things. But also I will say um, I guess. Uh, and this, this is a little bit related to, to what I said at the beginning, I'll try to make it a tip. Um, revel in the goal setting itself and the, and the journey and the process more than the accomplishment at the end. There's a lot of research about anticipation being a great source of joy. And I think especially in the pandemic when our horizon is really short, right? Like we can't really see that far out. <laughs> so it makes goal setting a little harder. I think we really need to find the things to look forward to on a more micro scale. But we, I, I think it's really important to build anticipation into your, 
your day, your week, your month. Yeah. That, that's about as far out as I can go. But, you know, my, um, my husband and I have started doing just Sunday brunches. We've got a list of like 30 different brunch recipes that we want to try. And we're just going through them each week. We're doing a different one. And it creates this sense of anticipation that I'm so desperate for in the pandemic. I just want something to look forward to. So I think connecting your goals or, or rather like building in anticipation into your goals will just maximize your joy as, as much as is possible in the midst of a global pandemic. Yeah, yeah. I heard two good tips in there, both the anticipation and the enjoying the journey. You know, yeah. it is, I have discovered that so much for myself that, the journey is, you know, when you ultimately accomplish that goal, it's almost like, now what, you know, what, what, mm -hmm. and you miss the fun of the learning. And, and, you know, again, there's lots of goals like that are never going to end. And that's great because that's what life is all about, you know, is to continue to learn and grow and find joy and enjoy everything along that journey. So, um, so thank you so much, Hannah, for, for joining me here today. It was so good to, to see you here on Zoom and, and hear your wise words. And I have so much respect for the work you've done. So I will uh, get the links from you and, and um, add that to the, to the, the notes. And is, is there anything you want to share just for the listeners about how they can find you and find out more about your work? Uh, well, yeah, I'll, I'll, we'll share the links for scrumyourwedding.com and everybody's invited that in actually I am, um, everybody's invited in, get it. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, that, I mean, that would be great if yeah. you could share those and thanks so much for including me in this podcast series. I really love it. And I love talking, talking to you and having the occasion. So thank you so much. Uh, you are a person to be watched. Mark my words, you are going to be a famous <laughs> person out there with wonderful content of how people can live fully. You are very kind. <laughs> connections. So thank you so much, Hannah. It was a pleasure. <laughs>